Hey guys, what's up? It's the Crazy Dave here, back with another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to do Unity Visual Scripting in Unity. You guys have been asking me a ton for this video. Um, it makes quite a bit of sense because, you know, this is really cool, especially for those who don't want to learn how to code, or they just don't do well with coding, or just don't enjoy coding. This is a fantastic option. And yeah, it's also, I feel like, quite a bit easier to get into. And yeah. Now, the good thing is that this isn't just like a side thing that Unity like barely supports and you can only make a few tiny projects with it. You can't even get that far. You can actually go quite a bit far. Um, the YouTuber Code Monkeys actually made a whole course on Udemy on this, um, how to make three games with this. Um, if you guys want, I'll even make some tutorials on this and post them here on the channel. Um, but it's a really easy option and yeah. Anyways, I'm going to jump straight into this now. Okay, so first things first, we need to talk about what Unity version you're using. So if you're using a, a version before 2021, um, there, you're going to have to do something different, or you're going to have to install something. If you're using Unity version above 2020, so I'm using like Unity version 2021, which is above 2020. So um, it's already pre-built into Unity, so you don't have to do anything. Um, but I will show you what you got to do if you want to, um, uh, if you have an older version. Okay, so first pull up your browser like so, and we're just gonna come here and search. And what you wanna search is Unity Asset Store. And once you're here, uh, you should just go to this link right here, click it. Once you're here, you should be taken to this area. And what we're gonna wanna do is go to the search bar here and you wanna search full. And then just hit enter. And a bunch of options should pull up, but the one we're looking for is right here, Bolt Visual Scripting. So all you're gonna do is click it. Oh, so you're gonna be, need to be signed into your Unity account, click it, and hit Add to My Assets. And then once you're in Unity again, you can come over here to go to Window, go to your Package Manager, go to uh, go from the Packages and go to My Assets, and just let this load. And then look for Bolt here, and then just hit Import it. But again, if you have any version above 2020, you don't have to do that. It's already built in. Okay, so how do we actually do visual scripting though once we have it in our project or already have it in our project? First things first, we need to create a new game object that apply a script to. So I'm gonna come over here to our hierarchy. I'm gonna right click and hit create empty. And I'm gonna call this, I'm actually just gonna leave this as game object. I'm gonna zero out the coordinates just cause that's good practice. And I'm gonna leave everything else on this or all the transform the same. And what we're going to do though is we're going to add a new type of component onto this object. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a script machine. And as you can see, two components actually get added on, a variables and a script machine. So basically what a script machine does is it's a component that allows us to attach visual scripting scripts to game objects. So let me show you. Let me come to my assets tab and let's create a new script. So I'm going to come into my script folder here. I'm gonna right click, go to create, visual scripting. This might be named bull if you downloaded, but I'm not sure. And what we wanna do is there we see two options. They'll have a state graph and a script graph. Don't worry about a state graph right now. You wanna worry about a script graph. So click script graph. I'm gonna name this my script. Hit enter. And we can actually come over to our game object now and grab this script and drag it into our graph area. With visual scripting, the uh, scripts are basically kind of called graphs. So yeah. Okay, so now that we have this attached to our object here, come over here and hit edit graph. And you see this menu should pop up. And this is actually where you guys are gonna do all of your uh, programming or visual scripting, I guess. And it's actually just a you know, nice just little menu, not tons of stuff here. Um, but we do have a little side menu on the side here that we do need to go over. And there's some stuff here um, for now. Just worry about trigger or don't worry about trigger inputs, outputs, or data inputs and outputs. You won't need to worry about that. Uh, just looking around for now, but you do need to worry about this. So what these buttons here, these are all um, for creating variables. And if you've never know, I don't know what a variable is, it's basically a thing that stores data. So if you have a speed, you would store that instead of a variable. So we have graph variables, which are just variables just for this graph. We have object variables that are only for this whole object. So if I had another graph or a script, um, I could access this object variable. 
But if it was a graph variable, I couldn't access it from another script. We have scene variables, which is um, variables that can be grabbed from every single game object in this scene. And we have application variables, which can be grabbed from any scene, anywhere. They're just You can grab them from anywhere. Then we have saved variables, which these are basically variables that get saved even once you close the program. So let's say you want to have like a high score system where their variables, once you collect a certain amount of coins and they come back and play the game, you don't want their coins to be reset, you'd probably make a saved variable. And you can even read what all these do. But how do we actually create one of these variables? Well, let me show you. I'm going to create a graph variable for now. Actually, let's create an object variable. And let's say I want to create a variable called, let's say I want to make a speed variable. So let's say this is how fast your character will move. So what you got to do is you got to click, go into new variable name. And you just have to type your name of your variable, mine's going to be speed, and then hit enter. And as you see, some stuff happened and we have this type area right here. And once you click this, this menu will pop up. And what this menu, um, menu here is for is just shows you all the types. This is going to tell us what type of variable this is. So like, let's show it, that's an example. It's like, let's say we want to make a speed variable that holds a number. Now, here's the thing. You will have to learn some of these data types when using Unity. Um, the main ones are floats, integers, booleans, and strings. And really what all those are is a float is a floating point number, or that's what it stands for is a floating number. Basically, it can it's just a number that can be any number at once. An integer is a number, but it has to be a whole number. It can't have a decimal. Boolean is just true or false, and then a string is just text. So we want this to be a number, so I'm going to set it to a float. And you can see this value area now pops up. So I can set this to whatever I want. I'm going to set it to uh, 8 for now. Sweet. And yeah. And I can create more variables, so I'll go... Oh, I create a variable that stores some text. So I'm going to go my text var enter type i'm gonna select a string because like i said that's text i'm gonna enter in the i'm gonna uh yeah i'll just say my values hello world classic now if you want to delete variable you just hit this minus sign and bam and this all works for every single variable type now, one more thing I should show you is if I close this graph area and come to this game object, click our game object. As you can see, being that I made an object variable in our variable component on that got added, added onto this game object when we added the script machine, you can now see that that um, speed variable we made is now visible here. And you can even see if I make a graph variable, so I'm going to call this like a my new var or something like that. Really simple. I'll just set it to a float set it to like five or something and if i close this menu again as you can see it didn't get added to our variables so yeah and one more thing you can change this in this variable thing which is really nice for like if you want to be able to easily check or change your player speed okay so now how do we actually do the coding because this is so far we've just created variables which is great and you need variables but we don't even know how to use these variables yet so to grab a node or grab blocks or whatever you want to call them, I recommend just calling them nodes. I'm going to be calling them nodes. So, yeah. um, so to grab a node, all you got to do is right click and you can see this menu comes up. So all we got to do is we got to search for the node we're looking for. And you can even see these types of nodes. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to search for the node on update. Oh, that's wrong. So I'm going to grab this node, and as you can see, this is the node I want, and as you can see, it's an event. Oh. Now, what event is, is basically, this is like triggers, I guess. If you ever done scratch, it's the same thing as scratch events. Um, an example is like when green flag clicked. And basically, all this is is when green flag clicked with a forever loop after it. So basically, what this does is every, like, every single frame it sends it output for, with this uh, flow thing. And you connect your nodes with these like triggers, I guess. Let me show you an example. So as I say, I want to, I want to add our speed variable onto our X position to, of my character every year. Basically, I want to do it forever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search, um, being that our character has a transform, 
which stores his position, his rotation, and scale. I just need to mod access the transform component. So what I need to do is go transform. And what I need to do is go transform dot. And you can, I, well, I don't need to do the dot, but I just see this transform thing here and you can click it and it shows me all this stuff that has to do with transforms. So what I'm going to look for is transform position. As you can see, we have two options, which is get and set. Get just grabs our position and set sets our position. So I'm going to grab set. And as you can see, the sync pulls up. And it's if you click this, you can even come over here in this menu. And this is what this other menu does. Is it basically you can it just describes what this node does, and then it tells us the type of values. So as you can see, inputs. It has a flow here. It has the target transform. So basically, um, what tr transform I want to move, I guess. So like basically, I could have another game object and grab its transform and be moving its position. And it also says we have a value that we want to set the position to, and it's a vector three, which just stores an X, Y, and Z. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and all I need to do now is search for new vector three. And I want to grab the one with X, Y, and Z. And as you can see, it has all these inputs. And again, I can click it and read it, X, Y, and Z, yep. And what I want to do is I basically want to grab our current position and add our speed thing onto it. So what I'm gonna do, if you remember, I can go transform, and look for our position and see position get and i need to grab just x so i can just grab drag out and you can see you can click this again is the output it says the world space position of the transform and then again you can click it and it says that this part back here is asking for what transform so i'm going to drag it out and i'm going to type x and put a space and as you see we have vector 3x get and this is now grabbing our X. Now, all I want to do is add this with our speed variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right click. I'm going to hit search add. And I'm going to click in math generic. And as you can see, I can even input and change how many things we want to add. I'm not going to do that though. We just want to add one thing. And I'm going to drag this like so. And I can even just come over here and drag grab our variable here and just drag it on. Or you can search for get variable node but it's easy to just drag them in and then drag the output of this get variable into our add and then drag this to the x value of our new vector 3 and then drag the vector 3 into our position and then we're going to hook the update up to our position you can see if we look over this basically on update so basically every time we're going to send a flow out and trigger this function so basically we're going to set our position to the vector 3 that we create here and what we're doing is we're setting our x equal to our position and we grab the x value of that and then we add it with our speed variable and then set the x of the vector 3 to that and then we set the vector 3 of our position so i'm going to change my speed to something like 0 0.5 so our character actually 0 0.1 so our character doesn't move too fast and i'll close this Oh, okay, we can't see our character right now, so I'm gonna make I'm gonna add a sprite render component so we can render our sprite character here. I'm gonna drag it in, and you can see we have this character. I'm gonna shrink him because he's kind of big, and I'm gonna put him to the left of the screen. I'm gonna go to my game menu and I'm gonna just hit play. And as you can see here, our character should just continuously move to the right. Like that so it's kind of jittery um that was just because yeah it, yeah it's cut mostly just because the game just started but as you can see if i set his coordinates to something like 50 or negative 50 my man i'm gonna change his speed again to 0 0.5 oh that's still fast i said this a negative there we go and you see our character moves to the right and I can change the speed rail. I can set this like negative one and recur from wow, that's really fast. Zero. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyways, I can just change this value and it affects how fast he's moving, all kinds of stuff. So it works. So that, that's how you do that. But I do want to state there is one more event that 
I, sh I just want to tell you now because you're going to use it all the time. And that's on start. And basically, it's when the game starts. And if you want to see all kinds of cool events you can do, you can just right click and go to events section right here. And it shows you all events, different types, such as like input events. So like on a keyboard input, stuff like that. So yeah, that's all there is to visual scripting, or at least how to do it. I hope this uh, satisfies you guys, what you guys are asking. If you guys want, I'd be absolutely down to make tutorials. Um, an example like a platformer, a first person controller, maybe like with guns and stuff too. Or most likely guns if it's a first person shooter. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, if you guys want any tutorials on Unity Visual Scripting, I'd be completely down to do it. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing and liking. If you subscribe, um, you'll be able to get notified when my next video comes out. So if you're interested in figuring out how to do Visual Scripting with Unity, hitting the subscribe button would be very recommended. Or at least liking this video will help put this video out to other people. So that other people can find out about Unity Visual Scripting because not tons of people know about it. It'd be really cool to have like more people figure it out about. Anyway guys, that's enough for me. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.